Okay, so when we are doing these bore models, we really want to pay attention to them carefully because they teach us not only about um, what the electrons are doing. Yeah, sure, I can make a send you a link of the video. Um, so what we're doing here is being clear about where the electrons are. Okay, we haven't actually taken a close look in this particular model uh, where protons and neutrons are. Okay, so when you did in grade nine the model of the atom, you'd learn that there's a nu nucleus. So just like how the sun is in the middle of our solar system, um, so is the nucleus in the middle of the atom. Then all around the outside would be the planets. Okay, so these little blue dots are like the planets and they orbit. Okay, so uh, is this Bohr model what we what it looks like? No. Okay, the new um, models of the atom are different. Like, let's go modern models of the atom. And they have these clouds with orbitals and they're all kinds of neato shapes. Okay, like this okay, is what I learned in university. Okay, was these different shapes. Um, and there's probably even a new model now. Yeah, like this. Okay. Um, this is a typical science one. That, like, basically, people see that and they think science, right? They're like, wow, this is so cool. Oh, thank you, Betty. Um, uh, but, of course, you know that already from your atomic model timeline that you did this weekend. Okay, this is the Rutherford model of the atom. And it doesn't have separate... Um, protons and neutrons yet, but it does have the electrons floating in some kind of shell. Okay, um, so the bohr, it's very boring, just getting bohr, B-O-H-R, okay, is this kind of model. And so the electrons really matter a lot, okay, because we can only have two in this first shell, and then I'm pretty sure it goes eight, eight, maybe 16, I can't remember. Okay, but um, we usually only do it for the first 20 on the periodic table, at least at this level. Okay, so let's take a look at these two electrons at the outside. First of all, in terms of vocab, um, we call those valence electrons. Okay, that's a nice intro. Um, yeah, so they're on the outer edge. Okay, and who cares? Um, we care because that's going to determine whether the atom becomes an anion, which is a negatively charged atom, or a cation, which is a positively charged ion. Okay, so um, if you have only two electrons in your outermost shell, it's really hard to hang on to them. Okay, so you're going to have some other element like fluorine for example one of the halogens that are going to try to rip that off you okay they are going to try to steal your electrons because they want a full octet you're like what's a full octet okay a full octet is like this one okay this second circle in there's eight or there should be eight i didn't count them okay electrons in that outermost shell okay and if you only have two, they're just kind of floating around. It's easy for somebody to grab them, okay? Um, so you'll quite often see ionic compounds where they're taking either the alkaline metals or the alkaline earth metals, okay, into the reaction. So if you take away these two electrons, okay, that means you're becoming positive, okay? And you're like, wait, what? Huh? Positive because you take something away, that's a good thing. Yeah, because you're taking away negativity. So think about it in terms of uh, like being grumpy. Okay, you go do some yoga or meditate or have a nap. Okay, you're taking away negativity and you become more positive. Okay, so if you're taking away two of these electrons, okay, you're taking away two negative charges and you would end up with a two plus charge. Okay, so just based on that, we know that it would have to be one of the alkaline earth metals because it would have a two plus charge. Now to figure out what actual element this is, let's count. 
Okay, one, two, three, four. This is probably um, 16 because it's two things of eight, so it's probably 20. Okay, and then you have your periodic table open, and you look to see which one says 20 in the top left-hand corner. Okay, and it happens to be calcium. So with calcium, if it has 20 electrons, it also has 20 protons. So I should draw some more pictures for you like this. Um, yeah, 20 protons, okay? And in terms of neutrons, there's a formula. It's atomic mass, let me write it in the chat for you. Okay, number of neutrons is number of, or atomic mass, sorry, minus atomic number. Okay, so quite often it's the same, but not always. Right, so that's a bit about the Bohr model that's important for you. Okay, and to help you learn more about that today, okay, I have a whole pile of videos for you. Okay, so on D2L I posted what you need to do today. Okay, and a lot of it is watching videos, because I mean, what's the difference between watching a video of me talk and, or the TED Ed ones? or having it streamed live, right? This way um, you don't have to worry about loading, okay? Or being interrupted, you could just pause it quickly. Okay, so I've listed um, which ones are the most important to watch. Okay, so video A, video B, um, those are really good. This Mr. Brown guy, right? He went through and made videos for every single topic in this entire course. Okay, so reading the textbook is really fun. And if you're the kind of person who learns really good through reading words and maybe taking notes from those words, that's what you should be doing, is taking notes from the textbook and looking at the pictures. Okay, if you're more of a presentation person, PowerPoint, then you need to be watching his videos as well. Okay, so that's your study material. Um, this guy is pretty good. He's uh, old school. Okay, and this is like this cool guy, and he's in detention for whatever reason. And so this is the teacher trying to explain um, about the model of the atom. Okay, so you're welcome to watch that one. Uh, he basically talks about it as different groups, like the pros, and I forget what else the other one is. Okay, um, but just like you can see in this picture here, the protons and neutrons are stuck together. And then the electrons are floating around the outside. Okay, and this is what model? The Bohr model. Okay, which, like I said, you're familiar with because you just did this atomic model timeline project. Okay, you had used presentation A and B, and you looked at the student samples to help you make yours. And you did it on paper because we already did two PowerPoints. And you submitted it on Flipgrid. Okay, so today's a good day where if you weren't sure what you were supposed to do, that you check your D2L and see if there's any assignments that either weren't done or were only half done. Because I noticed some of you did the density tower, but you forgot the solubility bit. Okay, so you might need to record that second part. Okay, it also says which other videos here to watch. Okay, I'm pretty sure um, C, E, and H is on your list. And then this is on purpose, right? The, I put the time so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay, a little bit in different languages can be helpful for you, okay? Depending on whether you know that language or not. What's this one? Oh, a mark, very nice. Okay, uh, Lewis dot diagram, okay? They are a lot like the Bohr model, but they often just put the dots in pairs. Okay, I think we'll spend more time on that a different day. Okay, so this one was beryllium, and it has four for an at atomic number on the outside. Okay, so that means it's going to have four electrons. Two in the first orbital, because you can only fit two, and then two more in the outer orbital, outermost orbital, the outermost shell. Okay, so what does that mean? That means it's going to be able to lose them. Okay, it's going to become a cation positively charged because it loses its negativity and it has a two plus charge. 
Hey, guess what um, family it's in? Alkaline earth metals. Okay, chlorine looks exciting. It has a lot more little electrons because its atomic number is 17. That means there's 17 electrons, 17 protons. So this little P plus means protons, okay, positively charged. E minus means electrons, okay. Um, so chlorine has 17, so 2 in the first one, 8 in the next one, and then 7 in the next one here. So chlorine only needs one more electron. So it's going to try to go steal it off of some either alkaline metal or alkaline earth metal, okay, to get a, a stable octet. So often on your periodic table, there'll be a little one minus here, okay, because it's going to try to steal one electron. Um, here's our fluorine, okay, it has nine protons, nine electrons, because it's right here, okay, we'd fill up that first uh, orbital with two electrons, and then seven in the outermost one. Seven plus two is nine. Okay, so we have all nine. We This guy wants one more electron, so it's going to become negatively charged. It's going to be an anion. Okay, um, that's fluorine. And while we're here, let's do number of neutrons. Okay, so it doesn't say on the board here, um, so I didn't teach them that yet, but this is the atomic mass. Okay, you do need to be able to keep it straight, which one's atomic mass and which one's atomic number. Okay, atomic number is at the top, and atomic mass is usually on the bottom in the middle, sometimes on the left a little bit. Okay, but this number minus this number is how many neutrons you have. So, 19 minus 9 is 10. Okay, so if we put a little n and a little 0 for neutrons, we would put 10. Yeah, see, so you figure out how many neutrons an element has. You subtract atomic mass from the atomic number. Yeah, so here's the examples. Okay, and I just uh, talk to my phone, so it's not always perfect, right? The highest wind is an unoptimum, the highest element. Okay, there are some more words for you. Oh, Mendeleev, if you haven't uh, figured out yet who Mendeleev is, he's the guy who came up with the periodic table. And I usually guarantee that the scientists who are famous for something don't always do everything themselves, but they wrote it down and they get credit for it, right? It's like kids who say, oh, I did that work. I just lost it. Well, you get a zero. Okay, or you didn't hand it in, or mine deleted. Okay, so his... He wrote it down, didn't get deleted, got published, and now everybody thinks that he's the one who came up with the periodic table. Did he have all the elements? Definitely not. Okay, we've been filling them in as we go. Okay, and there's a video all about him. Video J, wherever video J is. Here you go. Okay, right here. So when you watch this one, it has questions in it. It's called the Ed Puzzle, and uh, they're kind of cool. If you ever find one for me, let me know and I'll put it in. So that's on your list of things to do today. Okay, I'm just looking to see if there's any more stuff from me writing on the board. No. Okay. So luckily for you, I also recorded these. Well, I didn't. I had a kid hold my phone while I did the talking. Okay. Um, so you might need to zoom in a little bit. So this is on your list. Okay, is watching these videos. Uh, if we were in class, I would totally play periodic table bingo for you. And you're thinking, why, why would we play bingo? Um, because it forces you to learn the elements, right? I don't say, okay, under the I, uh, Li, I say lithium, lead, helium, iron, barium, neon, potassium, cobalt, tin, right? So just by having to play bingo like that, you start learning what the elements are. Okay, something else we would do if, uh, well, you could do it for fun if you want to, but you try to spell words, right? So you look and you just get more familiar with the periodic table by trying to see what letters exist. Okay, now this should be a lowercase i and this should be a lowercase e, but they didn't care when they were making a t-shirt. 